it actually causes a lot of long-term metabolic disorders, womb cancer. We cannot take PCOS lightly. Kidney deficiency, spleen deficiency. What exactly is PCOS? And what are its primary symptoms that women should be aware of? PCOS stands for Polycystic Ovarian Syndrome. PCOS is a condition whereby there is a hormonal disturbance and patients will present with irregular menstruation. This menstruation could be they have menses very irregularly instead of every month, maybe every two months or every three months. And the worst, worst case scenario, maybe even for one year or two years or five years before they actually come and see me. They may also have symptoms related to high male testosterone levels and they present clinically with either pimples or more body hair following the male pattern distribution, meaning that the hair tend to be uh, more over the chins or the lips or the over the chest and at the same time, uh, they have male pattern balding. So that's one of the more common symptoms of the uh, high testosterone. Besides that, they may also present with infertility. That means they are having difficulty getting pregnant. And uh, this is because they have irregular menses, hormonal disturbance, and if they don't ovulate every month, then the chances of getting pregnant compared to the other women is much lower. Some of them uh, have difficulty uh, losing weight, and they say that no matter how hard they exercise they, or they go on diet, they can't lose weight so easily. And instead of uh, losing weight, despite the exercise, they actually put on even more weight. Some, instead of presenting with what we call the gynae symptoms, gynae symptoms means they cannot get pregnant, menses are abnormal, uh, they got pimple, they may present with other issues, uh, which are the complications of uh, uh, PCOS that's uh, well known to us. In traditional Chinese medicine, how is PCOS understood or diagnosed? Are there specific patterns or imbalances that are commonly associated with PCOS from a TCM perspective? As a TCM physician, uh, we don't diagnose PCOS. You know, TCM has been practiced for more than 2,000 years and back in the ancient time, we don't exactly have names like PCOS. And so TCM was all about pinpointing and addressing symptoms or rather a set of symptoms or what we call um, patterns or um, syndromes of disharmony based on TCM theories. And so fast forward to the present, there's a greater acknowledgement of Western medical diagnostics and also terminology. So some of the greatest um, TCM practitioners or scholars from China, they concluded and came out with um, some common patterns or disharmony of disharmony of PCOS according to TCM theories and some common ones are um, kidney deficiency, spleen deficiency, there is uh, blood stagnation, liver stagnation, there is also um, dampness and phlegm accumulation. So these five are the common characteristics of PCOS that we normally look at in terms of TCM um, practice. So there are many criteria for which we diagnose PCOS. The latest or the most acceptable criteria is what we call the Rotterdam criteria. It looks into three parts. One is the clinical part. Clinical part is when we ask the patient uh, how their menses are, meaning they have abnormal menses, how abnormal the menses are, and the more infrequent the menses, the more severe their clinical presentation. Besides that, we also look at other clinical uh, presentation like as due to high testosterone such as the pimple and the male pattern uh, hair distribution and uh, the second part of diagnosis is to look at the uh, blood investigations and one of the criteria that is very very important is the high androgens in this case androgens we mean testosterone level testosterone is actually a male hormone so females actually have lower testosterone than the male counterparts but in some females our male testosterone is actually very high and with this high testosterone, they start having all the symptoms. Thirdly, uh, we do an ultrasound scan and to look for what we call ovarian follicles or polycystic uh, in the ovaries. 
And the definition of PCO is not like just because you see some follicles, it makes you PCO. You have to have like at least 12 uh, follicles, uh, less than one centimeter in the ovary, arrange like a pearl of strings on the surface of the ovary to actually call it a polycystic ovary. So as long as someone has got two out of three, three criteria, then we can diagnose them as having polycystic ovarian syndrome. Otherwise, it is, uh, if it's just a single um, uh, criteria that's met, right, then we cannot call it a PCO per se. So a short term issue would be like, uh, I've got irregular menses, and the male testosterone also causes more pimple, and the inability to ovulate means you cannot get pregnant so easily. Beyond that, uh, although people worry about the short term, actually more longer term issues would be what is the hormonal disturbance uh, going to lead to? And usually all these hormonal disturbance cause uh, insulin resistance. And as we know, insulin resistance means they are more prone to diabetes in the long term. And beyond diabetes, it cascades downwards towards your heart problem, high blood pressure, high cholesterol and so on. And if they are more overweight, they may also have difficulty sleeping. And we have this thing called sleep apnea where they suddenly stop breathing in the middle of sleeping. And because they don't sleep well, they end up having a very poor sleep quality. Long term, they may also have uh, may be more prone to cancer. Specifically, we talk about womb cancer. Because if the menses don't actually come, then there's no shedding of the womb lining. And no shedding of the womb lining gives I mean, rise to womb cancer in the long term. So actually, although we worry about PCOS as being a gynae issue, it actually causes a lot of long-term metabolic disorders which is like diabetes, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, heart problem and uh, womb cancer. So we cannot take PCOS lightly. So TCM takes a holistic approach to the treatment of PCOS or I would rather say you know to the treatment of patterns or disharmony of um, PCOS. The common treatment strategies that we use in TCM including uh, acupuncture, Chinese herbal medicine, sometimes scrapping, cupping, or even moxibustions, and most importantly, of course, dietary and lifestyle modifications. In your experience, how effective is TCM in managing PCOS symptoms? And are there any success stories you could share? So, um, I would say TCM can be quite effective in the treatment of PCOS. So, um, there's one patient who when she first came in, it was in 2021, I believe, 2022, early 2022. And she was um, 30 years old at the time. When she first came in, she, was, she got a clear diagnosis from her gynae that she was diagnosed with PCOS. And when she first came in, she was already trying for a baby for more than eight months, almost a year. And um, when she first came in, we went through a thorough consultations and she was having symptoms like, you know, um, irregular menses. Her menses was about 35 to 40 days. And um, she was having, you know, cold hands and, cold hands and feet, um, cold intolerance. She was also feeling tired all the time and she was also struggling to lose weight. Um, so we, went through her lifestyle, dietary habits. She wasn't doing much home cooked food. Um, she loves cold drinks. Um, and also uh, her sleep timing wasn't really the best. She slept after midnight and then woke up like 7, 6 a.m. And so um, I suggested her to make a little bit of adjustment to her lifestyle and diet. So not so much of cold drinks, uh, more home cooked food. Um, and then of course, sleep before 11, you know, TCM could be quite particular with their sleeping timing. Oh, she was also doing a lot of high intense exercises, try to lose weight. But because she was already, you know, tired all the time, so I suggested her to cut down a little bit on that intense exercises, but, uh, you know, substitute it with something more gentle, like some breathing work, because she wasn't managing her stress very well at the time. And so we did acupuncture and also Chinese herbal medicine for her weekly acupuncture. And she was quite compliant with her treatment and also some of my suggestions. So um, about after six cycles, she succeeded to, to be pregnant. And now I think her baby is already here. Uh, PCOS is hormonal disturbance whereby the uh, uh, different hormones, we have these uh, hormones from the brain and hormones from the ovary which are not in alignment to each other. Uh, 
is like an orchestra. You have a good musician, you have a good pianist, a good drum, but they are just not playing in tandem. So the orchestra doesn't create very nice music. So same way, if the hormones are not in balance, you don't get a nice menstrual cycle. And we don't have a nice menstrual cycle, you may not be ovulating. So when you don't ovulate, then uh, it's uh, very good to get pregnant. So someone who is uh, trying to get pregnant, first and foremost, uh, will need the eggs to be ovulated every month. Uh, and the way to do it is, uh, we always say, let's start with medication. But actually, most important before we even start medication is actually to look back the lifestyle, meaning that if they can actually lose weight, uh, the medications that we use to induce ovulation will work much, much better. Just a weight loss of about 10% will cause uh, someone to ovulate quite nicely. So people can actually get pregnant even without going for further medication if they just lose weight first and foremost. And even if they want to go on lose weight, uh, they want to take medication, which is actually a great idea. We also know that the medication works best when there is a uh, uh, attempts at weight loss, that means when we start exercising uh, on uh, diet, the medication that we give work better. But all this, uh, I would say, it's not just to take medication, most importantly is to try and create a better lifestyle for them first. What treatment options are available for managing PCOS symptoms? And how do these treatments help women with the condition? In terms of uh, treating symptoms, it depends on at what stage the woman is at. Some people are trying to get pregnant, some actually don't want to get pregnant. So if people who want, who don't want to get pregnant, then we can give them a birth control pill. Birth control pill uh, will help to regulate the menses and birth control pill will clean up their pimples and cut down the male testosterone hormone. But for those who are trying to get pregnant, you can actually give birth control pills. So we use other hormones which uh, do not stop ovulation, but will just regulate menses. But these hormones to help regulation may not help to clear the pimple. So that is provided they are looking at hormonal regulation. If the means issue is not hormonal regulation, but just to bring down testosterone, then there is medication which are pure anti-testosterone as well. And people, besides uh, going for medication, uh, birth control pill, they can use pimple tablet and um, pimple cream. For those who are having other conditions, right? Uh, example, overweight, then we give them medication to lose weight or lifestyle changes. For those who got sleep apnea or cannot sleep well, then they, they should actually go and see um, sleep studies to see how bad their sleep pattern is. Uh, for those who have uh, overweight and with diabetes, then we ask them to uh, try and correct their diabetes with medications as well. So there are many things that we need to take care of, uh, depending on what, what stage of their life their woman is in. So um, before they come to TCM, we would advise them to go and see the primary healthcare provider say gynecologist or reproductive um, endocrinologist to get a clear diagnosis and also to discuss about the conventional treatment options available before coming to TCM and um, they also have to choose their TCM physician wisely so they want to make sure that they are getting a qualified and uh, a registered TCM physician to start with uh, uh, if they are looking for a fertility treatment, I think it would be best if you can see a TCM physician who is experienced in you know, seeing women's health issue and fertility. Um, and when they go in for the consultations, they want to make sure that um, they share about uh, detailed medical history, including their menstrual cycle, their symptoms, their dietary and lifestyle habits, you know, as well as their emotional well-being. And um, they also want to make sure that they communicate openly about the expectations, their concerns, and some pre-existing conditions. If they are, you know, receiving any conventional or Western uh, treatment, because they they also want to make sure that they have realistic expectations. Because TCM doesn't work like magic. Because you don't sometimes, uh, you know, you don't see the immediate result, and um, you want to make sure that you communicate openly with your TCM physicians.